Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Frans Groetaars, board member of the Liberation Concert Foundation. Dames en heren, maak uw aandacht voor Frans Groetaars, bestuurslid van de stichting Liberation Concert. Mr. John Wessels, Chief Operations Officer, American Battle Monuments Commission. Mrs. Maya Verloop, I now look to the right person. Chauffeur <laughs> d'affaires, United States Ambassador The Hague. Mrs. Madeleine van Torenburg, Deputy Provincie Limburg, and Mr. Schraer Cox, Major of the Municipality Eis de Margate. Distinguished, distinguished guests and dear musicians. Without the musicians, no concerts. On behalf of the Liberation Concert Foundation, a warm welcome to this concert. For the 16th time, the Philharmonie Zuid Nederland breaks the serene tranquility of this beautiful cemetery as a tribute to the 8,300 men and women who are buried here and who gave their lives for our freedom. But also as a signal that we must constantly realize that freedom is not self-evident. In the program booklet, you can read how our foundation, together with the Philharmonie Zuid Nederland, is conveying this message to our youth through education projects. During this year's Liberation Concert, we will experience the world premiere of the special hymn written by the composer Mark Putz in honor of the new visitor center to be. This hymn is an everlasting gift by the Philharmonie Zuid Nederland and the Liberation Concert Foundation to the American Battle Monuments Commission. Jos Rude will talk about this hymn in a moment. We thank all sponsors who made it possible to organize the concert and the education program again this year. In particular, the province of Limburg and the Veefonds, which have supported this concert from the start 16 years ago. The Rabobank that makes the education program possible and the municipality of as the Margrate, which supports us in many ways. Ladies and gentlemen, your presence make this concert a special experience every year. Thank you for coming again. I wish you lots of listening pleasure, and I thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, an address will now be given by Mr. Jason Bordelon, Superintendent of the Netherlands American Cemetery, Margraten. Dames and heren, mark uw aandacht voor de heer Jason Bordelon, Superintendent van de Amerikaanse Begraafplaats, Margraten. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2021 Liberation Concert at the Netherlands American Cemetery this year commemorating the 77th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands. My name is Jason Bordelon, and it's an honor to be the new superintendent of the Netherlands American Cemetery and to be here with you today. On behalf of the American Battle Monuments Commission, I would like to extend a particular warm welcome to Regional Minister Madeleine von Turenberg and Ms. Maria Verlo, Charge Fair at Interim of the United States of America as well as the very distinguished military and civilian leaders and all of you gathered here this afternoon. For many reasons, this Remembrance Concert has been supported and embraced by this community and by the ABMC. We are treated to world-class music from the South Netherlands Philharmonic Orchestra, and I would like to thank the province of Limburg and the township of Eisden Margraten who together with the Stichting Ebertun and the South Netherlands Philharmonic have organized and produced this liberation concert all these years. The mission of the American Battle Monuments Commission is to commemorate and to honor the service and the sacrifices of the United States Armed Forces. 
My colleagues and I do so by tending the graves of our fallen servicemen and women buried at 26 American cemeteries and by maintaining 32 memorials throughout the world. We do so also by preserving the stories of their deeds and the endeavors of those that fought at their side, courageous actions that bequeath the blessings of freedom to future generations. Here lie 8,289 of our military dead. Next to the chapel, our courts of honor record the names of another 1,722 Americans who died during this campaign and who were never recovered. It is humbling for me not only as an American, but also as the new superintendent of this holy ground to see so many Dutch citizens coming to offer their respects to those commemorated here. I've been impressed to learn that every single grave here is adopted by a Dutch family, proof positive of the enduring ties that still bind us together 77 years later. The American Battle Monuments Commission and I cannot thank you enough for inspiring personal demonstration of love and respect for these men and women who fought valiantly and who paid the ultimate sacrifice on this land for our freedom. I wish you all a wonderful concert. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, an address will now be given by the Honorable Maria Verloop, the United States Chargé d'Affaires to the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Dames en heren, mag u aandacht voor Haar Excellentie Maria Verloop, Chargé d'Affaires van de Verenigde Staten van, van Amerika in Nederland. Goedemiddag, wat een prachtige dag. Echt fijn. On behalf of the United States of America, I want to thank you for joining us for this year's Liberation Concert. We are incredibly fortunate that despite all of the challenges of the past 18 months, we are still able to celebrate freedom and remember the fallen together. Thank you to the American Battle Monuments Commission, whose steadfast stewardship of this hallowed ground makes this possible. Our thanks also go out to the Stichting Liberation Concert, Province of Limburg, to the South Netherlands Philharmonic Orchestra, and especially to the people and city of Margraten. We see so many familiar faces here year in and year out, and even though almost 2,000 people visit the cemetery every day, this always feels like a tight-knit community. That sense of family is underpinned by the 400-year relationship between the United States and the Netherlands. Everyday people like you make this a family. You keep memories of our service members alive. You build on our unique history and honor not only our fallen, but also our shared values. It was that same sense of family and shared values that led the four Zaki brothers to enlist in the military. It's hard to imagine a more American story than theirs. Their father was an Italian immigrant and their mother grew up working on her family's farm. The Zaki settled in Kentucky doing the hard, unforgiving work of Appalachian coal mining. But when storm clouds gathered in Europe, a full year before Pearl Harbor, two of the brothers, Pete and John, decided to enlist in the army. Pete was the eldest of the four brothers, and John the youngest. At 15, he lied about his age to follow his brother. As a parent of two teenagers myself, it's hard to imagine the bonds these brothers had let alone the courage that set them off across the Atlantic together to fight on behalf of people they had never met before. All four Zaki brothers wound up enlisting by the war's end. Louis, the second eldest, served in the Navy and he passed away in Tennessee in 1997. William Zaki, the second youngest brother, signed up in 1944, but the war ended before he would see combat. William still lives, he lives in Tennessee, and he tells the story of the Zaki brothers to whomever is interested in learning it. As for Pete and John, Europe would see them mature into squad and tank commanders respectively, both earning Purple Hearts and becoming bona fide war heroes. But they would never see the Appalachian Mountains again. On December 29th, 
1944, Pete Zaki was killed in action near the Ruhr River in Germany. John, the youngest brother, he would fall on exactly the same day across the border in Manet, Belgium. Today, we honor the brave, the fallen, those who gave, as President Lincoln said, the last full measure of devotion. And on a year where travel is difficult and we may not have many attendees from the United States, this family here stands in for the family who cannot be with us. That it also includes families who were notified of the identification of their loved one's remains as recently as this year. For those who dedicate themselves to honoring the fallen, to securing their legacy, it seems this work is never truly done. Please join me in remembering Pete and John Zaki, separated by conflict, but reunited here in Margraten. Join me in remembering all 10,023 of the souls memorialized here. They each have a story. They each have family. And your presence here today honors them all. Hearts look dunked. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Deputy Madeleine van Torenburg of the province of Limburg. Dames and heren, mark uw aandacht voor mevrouw Madeleine van Torenburg, deputy van de provincie Limburg. Ladies and gentlemen, for me, this is the second time I've been here. The first time, I was just a young girl, and I was, of course, moved by all those graves and all those names on the walls of the missing. In the meantime, I went away to study, to work, and to be a Dutch member of parliament for 14 years. But now, now I'm back and have the honor to speak here as deputy governor. This visit is moving me so much more. Firstly, because it's the most difficult decisions I ever had to take as a member of parliament were to vote in favor of the deployment of Dutch troops to Afghanistan and Mali for freedom and security. Now, when I look at all those graves, I realize even more that they remained with us because it was decided at that time that they too would risk their lives for peace and freedom far from home. But what moves me just as much is that I know now how well known they are and how the people here from generation to generation continue to adopt each grave and each name on that wall. Such as that of private first class Raymond Middelkauf, behind whose name after last year's liberation concert, former governor Theo Bovens placed a rosette, a, a rosette as a sign that he was no longer missing. Raymond came from Baltimore. As a teenager, he lost his father as a result of a plutonium poisoning. And in his 20s, he married his Louise and worked as a foreman. And in his early 30s, he joined the forces and never returned home. Home where his wife Louise, his mother Regina, and his brother Erdman never knew for certain whether he was really dead. The only certainty they had was that at the age of 31, on the 4th of December, 1944, he went missing. In that impenetrable Hutkin forest, an hour's drive from here, where tens of thousands lost their lives. And it was not until 75 years later that modern technology 
could reveal that he was one of the unknown soldiers buried in a grave in the Belgium Ardennes. He was reburied with military honors at Arlington National Cemetery in the presence of family too young to have known him. For them, he will always be Raymond, who was talked about as a husband, as a son and a brother, who was never found and which made mourning so more difficult for those he left behind. Thank you, sorry. Paying homage to him and all those others. That is what we are doing here today at this memorial concert. With a newly composed hymn for them, but also as a piece for the unknown soldier. I will certainly think of Raymond today, because that was what he was so many years. But my thoughts will also go out to all those lesser known soldiers who risked their lives far from home for the peace and freedom of others, but who sadly did not see and win the fight. They too deserve to be remembered, just like Raymond and all the others here for 77 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jos Roeden, artistic manager of the Philharmonie South Nederland, will introduce to you this year's musical program. Dames and heren, de heer Jos Roeden, artistic manager van de Philharmonie South Nederland, zal nu het muzikale programma inleiden. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we can never forget how the lives of thousands of young men and women came to an end for the sake of our freedom. Every year, Philharmonie in Nederland commemorates their sacrifice by means of the Liberation Concert. This concert law calls for lasting peace using the universal language of music. We start in 1694, when the English composer Henry Purcell wrote his funeral music. It was a time quite similar to the present a smallpox epidemic had taken control over England and ended thousands of lives, one of which being that of the beloved Queen Mary. Purcell's music for brass and drums accompanied Mary's coven to her last resting place in Westminster Abbey. The second piece, For the Unknown Soldier, is an intimate work for string orchestra and harp, where Purcell, on behalf of his fellow countrymen, paid one last tribute to Queen Mary the Belgian composer Derek Brosset wrote an intimate work for them who passed anonymously during this First and Second World War. The third work of today refers to a time in which the horrors of war on an unknown continent still seems miles away. You will hear the soloist Hannah Morrison and the orchestra in the song cycle Knoxville Summer of 1915 by Samuel Barber. Barbara takes you along in the suit to a lovely summer evening as a six-year-old boy in the south of the United States. In the company of his dear family, the world seems to be a carefree and perfect place. Next, you will hear world premiere. Unknown territory is dedicated to this cemetery, where to this very day, the South Limburg's population honors their American saviors. Marek Putz described the request of composing this hymn as the highest possible honor. He says, to me, as a composer from this region, this piece is a full circle. Unknown territory voices how I feel and how this region is forever thankful to the soldiers buried here. For the last piece of this concert, we return to London. Joseph Haydn wrote his 100th symphony exactly 100 years after Purcell during his stay in London. The symphony carries the nickname Military Symphony and has an heroic character. 
by using a lot of percussion instruments and trumpet signals, Haydn evokes a military atmosphere. Especially in the second and fourth movement, the hellish tumult of war can be heard. Dear ladies and gentlemen, where words fall short, there is the connecting power of music. I hope this concert contributes to the eternal gratitude of our acquired freedom.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance to this year's Liberation Concert. In keeping with the host nation requirements, we ask that all guests maintain social distancing and exit the, the cemetery grounds. Please follow the directions of the parking supervisors who will direct you exit from the cemetery. On behalf of the organization of the Liberation Concert, we wish you a good and safe journey home. Dames en heren, wij danken u voor uw komst naar het bevrijdingsconcert van dit jaar. In overeenstemming met de COVID-maatregelen verzoeken we u vriendelijk toch dringend gepaste afstand te houden en de begraafplaats direct te verlaten. Volg de aanwijzingen van de parkeerwachter bij het uitrijden van de begraafplaats. Wij wensen u namens de organisatie van het Liberation Concert een goede en veilige reis huiswaarts.